We are gathered this morning to remember and to give thanks for the life of Richard S. Quattlebaum. For 89 years of life, for 64 years of marriage, for decades of devotion to his family, to his church, to his alma mater, Clemson, and to the community of Pendleton. Thanks be to God. Richard was such a strong force for good in our community and in our lives, and we are thankful to remember him this day. We grieve the end of his time with us on earth, because even 89 years doesn't feel like quite enough. And yet, we can rejoice knowing that he is in the full and eternal presence of the God who created him, the God who loves him, the God who has been with him throughout all of his long life. And we too can trust in God. We can trust in God's peace that passes understanding, and we can lean on God's strength to sustain us through this day and the days and weeks to come. Let us go to God in prayer. God, for your servant, Richard Quattlebaum, we give you thanks. We thank you for the many ways in which he loved and lived and shared and gave of himself here in our community among us and even beyond this place and this time. We thank you, God, for this opportunity to remember him And we pray that our words and our prayers and our hearts might honor him. May we honor the love and kindness with which he lived, the ways in which he loved so many gathered here. We thank you, God, for this love that we have shared with someone so dear. And we pray for that love to continue on. We know that love, your love, God, outlasts all things, even death. And so even though we grieve the end of Richard's time here with us on earth, we know that the love we shared is eternal because of your great love. And so, God, we trust in your love. And we pray that your love might sustain us for this hour for this day, and for the days and weeks to come. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Good morning. When Shelby called, she asked me if I would sing Amazing Grace. But then she wanted another song, and she left it up to me. But in her suggestion, she did suggest his eyes on the sparrow. So that's the one that fell open in the book. Why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When a Jesus is my portion, My constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. And I sing because I'm free. For his eye is on the sparrow. 
world and I know he watches me. Amazing grace, how sweet the sun that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm a found. Was blind, but now I see. Praise God, 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 praise God. Sandra, that is beautiful. I know if Richard were here, he would have tears in his eyes, as many of us do. What powerful words and what a meaningful reminder of God's presence with us. The 121st Psalm offers us words of hope in such times as this. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore.
Richard has indeed exchanged that old rugged cross for a crown. Thanks be to God. How do we describe in mere words the impact of a man of such compassion and strength as Richard Quattlebaum? At times like these, words do not nearly suffice to convey the depth of appreciation and love that Richard inspired in so many of us, as evidenced by your presence here. On this cold day, in the midst of such a busy time of year with the holiday season so quickly approaching, so many dear friends and family are gathered here to remember Richard's life. And I know there are others who wish they could be here, but illness or distance prevented them. We are here because Richard Quattlebaum had an impact on us, one that I cannot hope to sum up in words. But as a starting point, I want to offer some words of scripture that I think capture the way, or at least begin to capture the way, that Richard lived and loved during his 89 years of life on this earth. In the letter to the Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 1 through 7, and then verse 32, the Apostle Paul writes, I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. In so many ways, Richard Quattlebaum embodied humility, kindness, gentleness, patience, tenderheartedness, and grace. He loved his family. Shelby shared how he was born and raised on a small farm in Chester. His father died at an early age, leaving Richard's mother with four children, Richard, his brothers Ed and Don, and his sister Martha, whom he always called simply Sister. His, their mother was talented, industrious, and hardworking, traits that Richard surely inherited. Through her work as a seamstress, she managed to send all four children to college. Richard graduated from Clemson in 1955 and then went to work as an assistant county agent for J.H. Hopkins of Pendleton. And this is how he came to meet Shelby. Shelby had been gifted a very special lamp from her aunt, and she was told to call the county agent's office in Anderson and have the lamp electrified. And so she did, and Richard Quattlebaum was assigned to the task. He fixed the lamp, and he brought it to the house where he was welcomed by Shelby's parents. Shelby's mother was widely known as an excellent cook, and no one could visit the house without being fed a meal or at least a piece of cake. And so after that, Richard came by a few more times to visit. Shelby's parents thought he was coming to check on the lamp. They must have been very impressed with this diligent young assistant county agent. But Richard had another reason for visiting the house, and it wasn't just the cake. He wanted to see Shelby, and he asked her to marry him. And in 1958, they were married, a marriage that would last 64 years. The love and devotion that Richard and Shelby held for one another grew to include their daughter Tammy and later grandchildren Russ and Katie, their spouses Kristen and John, and now great-grandchildren Nick and Will, Pete and Davis. Richard was so proud of his family. He loved you all so much and so often told me of your accomplishments, how the babies were doing, about Tammy's artwork, about everyone's job, everything that was happening. He was so thankful and so proud. 
If you were hurting, he was hurting. And that was true for his friends as well. He had such a tender heart. I saw him many times with tears in his eyes, often because someone else was hurting, because of what someone else was going through. Katie remembers Pop as someone who could do anything. He could fix a lamp, of course. He could fix a go-kart, a car, furniture. Russ said Pop never needed a manual, but somehow seemed to always know what to do. He taught Tammy and later Russ and Katie all sorts of things. One of their family treasures is a pie safe that was purchased when Richard was teaching Tammy how to bid at an estate sale. Richard also loved his friends. He had lifelong friends, and they shared so many great memories. Hitchhiking to Walhalla for a steak and strawberry cheesecake, or strawberry shortcake, I think it was. (laughs) Wrong kind of cake. Going to Winthrop on the weekends, hitchhiking there as well. Richard and Albert Gant worked together as bellhops at the Clemson house where they would watch for the Cadillacs to pull up and then compete to see who could get out there first, hoping for those good tips. Richard and Doc Kellums spent many, many hours together tailgating at Clemson football games, passing on the love for Clemson football to their family and restoring cars and furniture. I was recently visiting in the home of Ann Rotten, who, along with her late husband Bob, had been longtime friends of Richard and Shelby, and Ann showed me around her beautiful home, and it seemed that in every room she pointed to something and said, Richard got that for us, or Richard restored that for us. He was all over that house, and I know he is all over this community in so many ways. He so generously shared of his wonderful talents. He was down to earth and humble. One of my favorite stories that the family shared was when Martha Stewart once visited our town of Pendleton and she stopped by the antique store. Richard was out back cutting bamboo and so Shelby wanted to warn him before he came in all dust covered from working outside. She said, Martha Stewart is here in the shop. And he said, who is Martha Stewart? (laughs) Is she a neighbor of ours? He was not one to follow the rich and famous. He was humble, down to earth, generous and kind. His kindness and sweet, sweet spirit was such a gift to this church and he loved his church. He was faithful and devoted. His Sunday school class was especially meaningful to him. And we have grieved in recent years as several members of that class have passed away. One of the generous ways that Richard served this church was through his care for our church cemetery. For years, he was the only one who really knew who was buried where and which plots were available. And a few months ago, when we realized Richard is not going to be able to walk that cemetery anymore, we had to come up with a new plan because he had a lot of knowledge that nobody else had. And that was a challenge because we all know Richard Quattlebaum is not replaceable. Richard loved Clemson. As a student, he sang in the Glee Club, and in the decades since then, he's been a faithful supporter of the university. Shelby said he was on his third Clemson ring because he wore them until they were completely smooth. And Katie still wears hers because of him. She even had it replaced when it was lost because of how much Clemson means to her pop and will mean to her and all of the family. Richard loved his country. He served faithfully in the army, as we will observe through the military honors as part of the service today, and how appropriate it is that just a few days after Veterans Day, we are remembering and honoring Richard. He loved this community of Pendleton. He was a farmer and a merchant for 26 years. He and Shelby owned the Pendleton Antique Company. He was a lifetime member of Pendleton Little Theater. He was part of our sister uh, town relationship with the town in Scotland. In so many ways, Richard enriched this town, and he has made such a lasting impact on this community. And as we remember him, may we honor his legacy, which as I heard his family say yesterday and thought captured it so well, his legacy was one of kindness. 
He was such a kind person, and he exuded kindness wherever he went. We are gathered here today remembering, I would imagine, many of our stories feature how kind he was, how tender-hearted, what a good friend he was. I know there are so many wonderful stories about Richard's life, the many memories that you have shared with him. I know you have already shared many of those with Shelby and the family, and I encourage you to continue sharing those stories. If you don't have a chance to share your story today, you might write it down and send it to them so she can read it later. Those stories are such treasures, and they are a way in which Richard's legacy of love and kindness is carried on. And so as we remember Richard, may we embody kindness as he did, and may we embody the words of Ephesians 4 as he did. Be kind, compassionate, tender-hearted forgiving each other in the same way God forgave you in Christ. Because it is the grace of God that has brought all of us into this world, the grace of God that sustains us, and by the grace of God, we can hope in eternal life. We can hope, we can trust in that promise of eternal life and eternal comfort. As we close our time here in the sanctuary today, in just a few moments, we will process to the cemetery where we will have a graveside, a few words of service and the military honors there. As we recess out, you may recognize the familiar tune of the song, Because He Lives. Because He Lives, I Can Face Tomorrow. Because Jesus Lives, We Can Face Tomorrow. The life and death and resurrection of Jesus gave Richard hope so many times throughout his life. And as we process from here outside into the sun, hopefully it will be a little bit warm as we walk to the cemetery and as we gather there, we know too that because Jesus lives, we too can face tomorrow. Let me invite you to hear this word of benediction, a benediction that I have offered here in this congregation many times as Richard has been sitting right back there. Depart now in the fellowship of God the Father, remembering as you go, by the goodness of God, you have been brought into this world. By the grace of God, you have been kept all the day long, even until this very hour. And by the love of God, fully revealed in the face of Jesus, you are being redeemed. Amen.